It started with a shipwreck, not the kind with treasure or sunken gold, but with something far more destructive, rats. Hundreds of them, stowaways on a 19th century ship, swimming to the nearest shore, a tiny lush island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And they did what rats do best, eat, multiply, and destroy. Within just a few years, the island's vibrant ecosystem was collapsing. Eggs disappeared from nests. Burrows were raided. Trees stopped flowering. Even the insects were vanishing. This wasn't just an invasion. It was an ecological takeover. This is Palmyra Atoll, a remote cluster of islets thousands of miles from the nearest major city, untouched for centuries until humans and rats showed up. By the late 20th century, Palmyra had over 30,000 rats. That's more rats than trees. They were in the canopy, the underbrush, even swimming in tidal pools. Nothing was safe, not birds, not turtles, not even the soil. Palmyra was once a nesting paradise for seabirds, but now their chicks rarely survived more than a night, and the impact rippled outward. You see, seabirds do more than just flap around and make noise. Their droppings, called guano, are like super fertilizer. They feed the plant, which feed the insects, which feed everything else. Without the birds, the entire food web started to unravel. In 2011, a group of scientists and conservationists decided to take the biggest risk of their careers, total rat eradication. The plan was to kill every single rat on the island, no survivors, not one. Because if even a single pregnant female remained, the problem would start all over again. It began with helicopters. They dropped special bait laced with rodenticide, designed to kill rats, but not harm birds, fish, or crabs. The bait had to be timed perfectly. Just after nesting season, just before the rains, precision was everything. Even the way the pellets broke apart in humidity had to be tested. For weeks they watched, listened, counted droppings, set up cameras, then waited. The bait worked. Thousands of rats died. But the team didn't celebrate, because rats are master hiders. You might see ten, but a hundred more are watching you. So they returned, again and again, for months looking for tracks, chew marks, nests. They even brought in specially trained sniffer dogs to find survivors. One false negative, and the island would be lost again. But eventually, amazing result was seen. Silence. No rustling in the grass, no clawing underfoot. The island was quiet. For the first time in over a century, Palmyra was rat-free, and the result was nothing short of a miracle. Within just one year, seabird populations surged. Native trees began to bloom again. Insects returned. Even the soil changed, becoming richer, more alive. The coral reefs started to heal too. Without seabirds, the surrounding ocean lacked nitrogen and phosphorus, key nutrients that help corals thrive. Once the birds came back, their droppings fed the trees, and the runoff fed the sea. Removing rats didn't just save the island. It revived the ocean around it. Scientists were stunned. This was one of the first recorded links between land-based invasive species and ocean health. One small change, and an entire marine ecosystem bounced back. Today, Palmyra is used as a model for other islands suffering from invasive species. Dozens of similar efforts are now underway, from New Zealand to the Galapagos. But these missions are never easy. They're expensive, risky, and emotionally tough. No one likes killing animals, but sometimes, to save an ecosystem, you have to make the hardest choice. Palmyra Atoll is quiet again, that deep, wild, buzzing kind of silence that only comes from balance.